because he said, I'm the one that did the teaching, but I didn't baptize all of you. You were baptized by other people. And so, uh, yes, I can go over the internet because the command is to go. The generic authority is uh, how to go. You can go in a car, you can go on a motorcycle, you can go on horseback, you can ride a bike, you can go over the internet, you can go over the radio, you can go over TV like I'm coming to you tonight. And if you're hearing what I'm saying tonight, and, and you, you, you decide, well, you know, that's the gospel of Christ. I can hear that that's the gospel of Christ. And so uh, I can see where the gospel of Christ says that having heard the word, Romans 10, 17, and believing what it teaches about Christ and His kingdom, John 8, 24, I need to repent of my sins, Acts 17, 30. And repenting of my sins, I need to confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, Acts 8, 37. And making that confession with the mouth unto salvation, Romans 10.10, 10, I need to be baptized to have my sins washed away. Acts chapter 2, verse 38, 22.16, Galatians 3, 26, 27, Romans 6, 3 and 4. Now, who am I going to get to baptize me? Well, I've heard from people that, that uh, from watching the program and being taught by the program, went to their local congregation of the Church of Christ and talked to the preacher there and told the preacher there that they'd been watching the program and they understood they needed to be baptized and the preacher there took them and baptized them. Fine. Who baptizes them doesn't matter. All that matters is that they hear the gospel and they become disciples by, the, by obeying the gospel of Christ. And so who does the baptizing? Well, Jesus didn't say here who does the baptizing. He just said, go, make disciples. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and in the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all things I've commanded you. He doesn't say specifically who does the baptizing. And Paul said that it, that wasn't significant. They were being divided up. You know, some say you're of Paul, some say of Cephas, some say of Apollos. You shouldn't do that. You're baptized into Christ. You belong to Christ. Who does the baptizing doesn't matter because the person doing the baptizing wasn't crucified for you. And so, uh, th these are things of generic authority. Who does the baptizing? And you know, that's one of the, a that's one of the accusations we get. That, that a person's salvation, that by what we're teaching, uh, uh, through the necessity of baptism, by teaching the necessity of baptism, that we're adding something into the scheme of redemption by saying you have to be baptized by an elder in the church of Christ. I'm not an elder. I baptize people. I know people who aren't even preachers who baptize people. I know of people who, who uh, were baptized by, by, by people that weren't even Christians. There, there weren't any other uh, Christians uh, where they were. And so when they learned the gospel, they went to somebody and explained to them, this is what I need to do to become a Christian, and I need you to assist me with that. It doesn't matter who does the baptizing. All that matters is that the person being baptized understands what they're doing. It's the answer of a good conscience toward God. Uh, 1 Peter 3.21 and so the person has to understand what they're doing. And so who does the baptizing is something that's authorized by generic authority. He doesn't specify who does the baptizing. He says go. So how do I go? Well, however I choose because I have generic authority to go in, in a variety of ways. Because he just said go and doesn't specify how. Who does the baptizing? Well, who, whoever uh, is available to do the baptizing by generic authority. See, this is the specific, this is the generic. That's how specific and generic authority works. Let's, let's look at another example that, that uh, comes up a lot. Singing. Ephesians 5.19, Colossians 3.16 says, Singing, making melody in your hearts to the Lord, teaching and admonishing one another. Uh, uh, teaching and admonishing one another, the only way that, that that's possible is congregational singing. Not choirs, not solos, not bands. Congregational singing. And so we have some specific authority there for singing. That it's congregational, that it's psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, that it's uh, teaching and admonishing. And so those things specify how the singing is done. Well, here's the generic authority. Does it say, now we know it's the specific authority is congregationally, but does it say specifically uh, what things you can use to keep, the, to, to keep the congregation all singing together? No. So songbooks are authorized by generic authority. What about a song leader? Generic authority. Does it say anywhere that they have song leaders? No. Does it say to sing congregationally? Yes. And so song leaders are authorized by generic authority. What about an invitation song at the end of the sermon? 
We say, uh, if you need to obey the gospel of Christ, believing, you need to come and be baptized, Mark 16, 16, while we stand and sing this song. Well, the specific authority is teaching and admonishing. And so the, the invitation song is authorized by generic authority because we're teaching and admonishing by the use of that invitation song, admonishing people to come to be baptized if they need to be, come and be baptized, or to come and repent if they need to come and repent already having been baptized. And so it's authorized by generic authority. So the spe specific authority is to sing, how to sing, what to sing, and then we have these things by generic authority. Okay, now, if this is the specific authority, then you, you can't fit instrument, in, in, mechanical instruments into the generic authority because you don't sing with mechanical instruments of music. You play with mechanical instruments of music. The specific authority is to sing, not to play. And so these things are things that are authorized generically because of the specific command. Instruments are not authorized by this spe uh, specific command. You can't get generic authority for instruments by this. Now if it said sing and play, but didn't say play on what, well then you could have guitars and drums and whatever by generic authority, but it doesn't say to play. You have to have play to authorize by generic authority the various instruments that people use. Okay? Uh, here's another example. A symbol. You know, people have gone so far as to say, you know, you use pews. Where's that in the Bible? You have buildings. Where's that in the Bible? Well, we have the command to assemble. In Acts chapter 20, verse 7, when the disciples came together on the first day of the week to break bread, they came together. They assembled. We have uh, Hebrews 10, 25, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together. Does it, does it uh, say uh, always where they assembled? Does it say always or does it specify this is where you have to assemble? Uh, th this is, uh, you have to assemble in the upper room. You have to assemble where there's much light. You have to, uh, no, it doesn't. It doesn't always specify where they assembled. And so you have some generic authority there. The specific command to assemble authorizes by generic authority meeting houses to assemble in, pews to sit on, signs out front to designate to people, this is where we assemble. These things are authorized generically. Okay, And in all of these things, all of these matters of generic authority, did where Noah got the wood alter what the ark was made of? No. Did how he carry it alter what it was made of? No. Uh, uh, going and making disciples, does how you go alter how disciples are made? No. People uh, hear the same message from my videos online that they would hear if I went to their house in person doesn't change anything. Or uh, does, does the uh, manner in which people become disciples change because of who does the baptizing? No. And so the generic authority cannot alter the specific authority. The specific authority supersedes any, any generic authority. And so anything you say is authorized generically cannot alter what the specific command is. Well, singing. Does using songbooks or a song leader or singing an invitation song alter what we're doing in our singing? No, not at all. Would it alter it if we introduced mechanical instruments of music? Yes, it would, because then we would be singing and playing. And people say, well, you're, uh, when you use a PowerPoint, you're uh, 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 preaching and presenting. Well, <laughs> what, is, what is a sermon? It's a presentation of the gospel. And so that's just ridiculous to say that because I use visual aids like this, that I'm somehow altering the message. You know, the message would be exactly the same whether I had it here on the screen or whether I didn't. It doesn't alter what I'm saying one whit. But if I introduce mechanical instruments of music, it does alter what I'm doing. And the generic authority cannot alter the specific authority. It cannot. Otherwise, it's not generic authority. Otherwise, you're doing something that is not authorized by the specific. If, if, if it alters the specific command, then the specific command doesn't authorize it. 